Okay, so good afternoon, uh, parents and uh, students. Welcome to, the, to this presentation session of our BASC in Applied Artificial Intelligence. So this is a brand new program launched by HKU last year, together with other four BASC programs. Um, the starting year has been quite successful and it attracted uh, many applications. And uh, finally, we had a first cohort of about 20 students. All these students are quite outstanding. They are highly motivated and uh, we just started the teaching and uh, uh, all the activities of the program in the last two months. So uh, now we are recruiting a new batch of students for next year and um, we come to this session and you will see the um, introductory talk delivered by Dr. Philippe Yu. Uh, by the way, I'm uh, Jeff Yao, the one of the coordinator of the program and um, together with other colleagues from computer science and the mathematics uh, department, actually this program is a joint program uh, a cross-faculty program by um, Faculty of Science, Faculty of Social Science, and the Faculty of Architectures. Uh, without further ado, I will just uh, leave Dr. Yu to do the presentation. So thank you again for attending this presentation session. Okay, uh, let me first of all introduce this Bachelor of Arts and Sciences in Applied Artificial Intelligence. So uh, as Professor Yao mentioned, this is the new program just uh, we launched the first batch last year. So um, this program aims uh, to focus on ap AI applications uh, in various areas. Uh, uh, and also we focus on the philosophical and ethical dimension as well. Uh, of course, the, the program will provide fundamental and practical knowledge for design and construction of intelligent systems. And also we emphasize problem-based learnings. As you can see, this is so-called applied AI, so of course, we definitely will emphasize the application part, and you will see in the program we also have various applications uh, of AI. So AI actually has a very long history. I right? data in 1950s, I, um, Alan Tuning's already developed this uh, tuning test right, to see whether human can uh, can decide whether this is generated from human or computers. And in fact, uh, it's went through uh, different uh, kind of periods. Uh, some winter season and peace season and of course uh, now become booming because of this so-called deep learning and so uh, you can see a lot of amazing applications uh, in various areas but I would like to highlight the, the ma major important parts about uh, the success of this AI in recent years. Right? In the old days right, uh, we have this kind of very simple uh, neural network model with only one layer which is just a non-linear model that help you to predict something. And people at that time think that if we can increase the number of layers, we can actually uh, can have a lot of success uh, in various fields, in particular in finance. But later on, people find that uh, this model always overfit and could not generate a good results. And it became kind of a cold age. And then uh, one major important factor is big data. Because now we have big data, and then we can have various complicated model and also we have very good computer power, this uh, GPU, uh, this is the latest GPU that we can have, uh, so that we can uh, build a very complicated model with large number of unknown parameters. And in fact, because of this kind of a uh, reasons advanced in computer technologies and also the, the big data era, we actually can build even more complicated models. And so we can actually uh, have a lot of images and uh, a more complicated model with could be more than a million of unknown parameters, uh, the model can generate very amazing uh, results. And in fact, uh, these three guys uh, recently got this tuning awards in uh, 2018 uh, uh, last year, and we call them the three fathers of deep learning. And you know, as I said before, uh, uh, deep neural network at some time, people think that this is not so useful and and I would think that uh, because of the, the big data, now we can actually consider a very complicated model. And because they continue to develop in this area, and that's why now we can enjoy lots of applications. So basically, AI is transforming the world. 
And you can see our program focus on five concentrations. The first one is so-called AI technologies. You can see we can have machine learning tools. We can have a, a tools called natural language processing that handle test data. We also have comparison that handle image. And we also have the test of speech to test or test to speech technologies and robotics. Right? All these come together right? that help us to uh, build a mis machine or system that can try to imitate what a human think, what a human will behave. And another application is the AI in medicine. And you can see um, recently, uh, uh, maybe you have uh, some kind of a medical image, and if you can identify some small dots, we call MCA dots, that is the red dots that you can see on the top right pictures, then you, this patient may have a, a chance that he may have this kind of stroke. And in fact, uh, we, Recently, we also have a press release talking about how we can make use of the AI technologies to help us to diagnose a patient who may have a, a stroke. And recently, we also worked together with some uh, uh, doctors uh, to help identify the liver cancers. So uh, if you can have a CT scan of the liver, can we identify the tumor areas like the red dots in the pictures? So um, another uh, Concentration is called AI in business and finance. Say, for example, uh, social network. Right? Nowadays, you have a lot of social media platforms that we can connect different peoples. And this, the one on the, on the left is actually so-called friendship networks. So each dot represents a student. So if they are connected with a nine, that means they are friends of each other. So if you can identify the friendship networks, then because of the peer effect, they may have similar behaviors. It right? may be smoking. If one smoke, then the other uh, friends will smoke as well. If they drink uh, wine a lot, alcohol a lot, the other one will also drink alcohol a lot. This kind of social networks can help us understand the behaviors, and also they may give you some recommendations. Another one is so-called the customer chat box. Right? You, you, you can have a machine. You talk to a machine in a, in a mobile apps and then you can give you some recommendation of the products right, based on your response on some of the questions. And you can also have some application in finance using how to, to speed up the computation to identify the optimal strategies, right, identify the texture data so that I can understand whether this stock is a good buy or not. Or even we can uh, make use of this NLP right, to, to generate a better result. Another one that we cannot miss is the AI in smart cities. So possibly you heard about this smart uh, lamppost. Uh, in fact, they, it's a, uh, put the ethical part aside, uh, uh, the, the personal privacy aside, the lamppost actually gives you a lot of data. You can see from this graph, from these pictures, you have meteorological data, you have uh, air quality data, you have the weather data. All these data can help you to understand the district level condition. You know, uh, what we can have is the meteorological condition in the air, but this is, will give you the district level uh, quality, air quality, district level uh, uh, traffic conditions. All these kind of things may help you to uh, provide some suggestion of better woods to a particular uh, location as well. And we offer so that it could give you some information for the self-driving cars so that you can uh, drive safely. And of course, you, you know we have a robotic called Sophia. It's made in Hong Kong. I recently talked to our chief executive, Carrie Lam, and talked about she want to find a job related to smart city. Right? Uh, you can look at the video, and it's very interesting. The last one is the AI in neurocognitive science. I, you know, right now we have this, we know the brain is so complicated. Can we make use of the AI to understand the brain, understand how we think? And of course, the, some kind of a chemical movement in the brain that may help you to uh, affect your behavior, or maybe you have some part that is not functioning, then can we understand how can we fix it? And how we think, how, how come we cannot remember something, but we can remember a lot of things. So, uh, and, and that could help us to identify what will be the major cause that will affect some kind of disease, for example, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease. And one of the recent uh, uh, discovery is this so-called hippocampus. It's a small region in the brain. If you look at the, the picture on the right, um, 
you can see if the middle part become bigger, that will have a kind of indication that you have the Alzheimer's disease. So if you are able to make use of the medical image scan, I can identify the volume of this hippocampus. Then I can know whether how big the chance you may have the Alzheimer's disease. That can help us uh, help the medical doctors to identify uh, just the condition of uh, each patient. And in fact, there are many more applications of the AI, uh, your, even your mobile phone, Apple Siri, uh, Amazon RICs, uh, Google Assistant, or even uh, the social credit system uh, now is uh, in use in, in mainland that can help us assess to measure your credibilities right, uh, in a loan or in uh, some uh, kind of a mortgage. And also you can see a lot of uh, uh, success in making use of AI technologies to, to play Go to a lot of different chess. Okay, uh, let's show you some examples. Right? This is uh, actually an image detection. Right? You ident identify various objects, uh, the airplanes, uh, the people, the car, and also in Hong Kong, you, you can have different people. So of course now the technology is even more advanced. You can not just simply identify object, you can also identify whether it's man or woman, whether this is wearing a wet shirt, uh, different kind of colors of the shirts. And the next one, uh, this is actually a project uh, talking about how to do the sketching in 2D, but you can generate 3D pictures. And so this is a demo. Uh, you can see right, uh, we just need to draw the, uh, the, the pictures in 2D. Right? It's just a rough sketch, and you can reproduce a 3D pictures. And you can vary the shape, and then the, the 3D picture will also change accordingly. You can see it's very amazing. Right? The 3D picture can also be rotated. OK, let's talk about the next one. So this one is actually a robotic project. Uh, you can see uh, there's a machine over there, and you can uh, the, mach the the ro robot have to follow uh, a target. Uh, even though you can see some obstacle in between the ro robot and the target, and so the robot have to identify the direction, have to find a way so that he can follow the target closely enough. You can see even though there are some people walking around, you can see some object. Even there's a uh, you have to turn around the corner, you, the object can still follow. The target can still, uh, the robot can still follow the target closely. So uh, that, that requires a lot of uh, image technologies and also the mechanical uh, technologies. So the algorithm has to identify the, 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 uh, the, the movement uh, so that it can uh, follow the, uh, the target closely. This is actually uh, an application of deep learnings right, to solve the elliptical partial differential equations. So um, actually, elliptical PDE problems can be found in many areas, such as vessel for simulation, self evolutions. So the one I show here is a 2D high contrast elliptical PDEs. So A is actually a very high contrast uh, uh, functions. Right? You, it become a high value when it's outside a circle, but inside a circle it become a very low values. So you can see a sudden jump right, when you pass the circle. And, and F and G are given some continuous functions. So we want to find the solution for you. And the one on the left is actually the deep learning solution. The one on the right is actually a true solution. You can see deep learning actually can replicate, right, can generate better true solutions, right, uh, even those the the condition is so drastic, right? Uh, the result is still very acceptable. This is actually a project talking about suicide detection. You know, uh, some teenagers, right, they really will express themselves in some social media platform before they try to commit their suicide. So uh, can we de make use of the, the message they, they mention in this social media platform so that we can identify who are uh, suicide at risk so that we can contact this person and maybe give them some positive thinking view so that we can guide them to give a uh, to, uh, to have more positive thinkings. So um, uh, we actually collect some social media platforms uh, messages and the data are actually very imbalanced. As you know, a lot of messages are relatively normal. 
only a small fraction in our data, data set, we only have 5% are, are at risk. So in other words, 95% are normal messages. So in such an unbalanced case, we have to find ways to identify uh, the uh, 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 and, go, and to train an algorithm so that we can obtain a good result. Another thing is because of all these social media platforms, what you wrote is more Cantonese styles. A lot of words are not usually the formal words that you read in a, in a, in a newspapers. And a lot of emoji as well. So how, uh, the challenge is that how can we handle all these kind of things? So actually we developed develop a machine learning models so the one that you see uh, are two examples. Uh, they are all in Chinese, and the second one also include the emojis. So we identify the probability, which is quite high. In fact, uh, the ground truth is that they are at risk. So uh, our G mean, which is the uh, geometric mean of the uh, accuracy of predicting uh, at risk uh, messages, multiplied by the accuracy of predicting negative messages, that means longer messages, uh, the geometric mean is 84.5%. In fact, uh, in Hong Kong, uh, our chief ex executive last year also delivered the policy address also mentioned various uh, uh, developments related to AI. For example, they want to reform the car infrastructure by 2020. They want to develop a platform right, operating uh, the big data analytics and AI applications to enhance the e-government service. And also the, the, uh, the government will earmark a 10 billions to support the establishment of two research centers. One of them is related to healthcare, the other one is related to AI and robotics. And because of this, uh, uh, this kind of additional funding, so hospital authorities I set up a data collaboration lab last year. And uh, because they want to have a kind of a pilot studies, so they invite universities to submit proposals. As far as I know, there are six proposals approved by these uh, hospital authorities, and actually two of them uh, belong to our departments. And of course, uh, this is a very famous guy, the uh, CEO of Google DeepMind. Right? He mentioned that I think about AI is a very powerful tool. What I'm most excited about is applying those tools to science and accelerating breakthroughs. It's, and one way you can think about our research program uh, is that, can we build out from our perception using deep learning uh, system and learning from first principle? Can we build out all the way to high level thinkings and symbolic thinkings? So I, I believe like, uh, you can see a lot of applications in different fields of science and, and social science, engineering, medicines, and we really can apply uh, various methodologies to help to improve the societies. And that's why in this program is a collaboration of four different faculties. We have faculty of science, faculty of engineering, faculty of architectures, and faculty of social sciences. So we aim to target those elite students to provide uh, formal training in AI and hope that they will become the future leader uh, in these areas. So that's why this is a highly interdisciplinary training. We have five different concentrations. Hope that students can identify the, the application side. And that's why we also uh, offer some new courses in this uh, program. Those highlighted in red are some new courses that we are going to offer. Uh, uh, in fact, this year we also offer new courses focused on uh, the foundation of AI and also ethics. In addition to the core programs, uh, we also have several BASC uh, programs. So all the students together will actually take some core courses. And one of them has already started is talking about leaderships. And I think they learn a lot from these leadership programs. And also students have to take 26 credits on language courses and common core courses. And students can even uh, consider a second major or a minor or some other electives. So this is a picture talking about this leadership uh, programs. You can see there are many uh, students in this BASC programs. I think more than 100 students. And why Hong Kong U? Right, of course, Hong Kong U rank highly in Hong Kong and also worldwide. And of course, we as a collaboration of different departments and faculties and all these uh, disciplines rank highly 
in Hong Kong or in Asia worldwide. And these are the topics that I list out that uh, highlight the strength of our uh, different disciplines. And we also have one special key lab, so it's the state key labs of brain and cognitive sciences. Remember one of the concentrations is AI in neurocognitive science. Of course, with this uh, state key lab, it can help us to uh, generate a lot of medical images from the brain and understand the brain more. And we also have another uh, innovation wing called Pen Wing Fan Innovation Ring. Uh, that will open to all engineering students as well as applied AI students. So students can enjoy the facility there, at the computer facilities, the robotic, uh, robotic uh, facilities, so, so that students can work in various projects and enjoy uh, uh, the, the space there. They can do a lot of different things, uh, creative things. And I've, I think uh, if you talk about the career prospect, definitely it's uh, very bright. And uh, you can see uh, we have a shortage of uh, manpower uh, in AI. And a lot of companies are very welcome and, uh, to uh, hire our students. And in fact, we also form some partnerships with some companies. Uh, recently, there's an article so I, from Forbes. It said that 2019 is the year AI will move into mainstream. In other words, that means the market is looking for people experts, talents uh, in AIs. Right? This table uh, lists out the top 10 jobs in more AI skills. You can see what they want, right? machine learning, deep learning, right? data sciences, computer versions, all these are something that we will cover in the programs. We also form partnership with industrial leaders, including JD, Alibaba, uh, Science, uh, uh, Cyberpost, uh, Rebans, uh, uh, lots of different companies uh, uh, would like to hire our students and say, for example, this is one of the students, uh, uh, Chiu Chi Shou. I, he graduated in uh, 2018, and then he worked as a research intern in NVIDIA, which is provide the GPU, right? And the lower one is actually another uh, graduate in our undergraduate data science at, at decision analytics programs. He is now working as a data scientist at uh, Hong Kong Jockey Cups. In fact, he got a lot of awards in lots of competitions. Recently, he, uh, in August 2019, he, he got the Champions Award in Taiwan 2019 blockchain in insurance tech hackathon. Right? And uh, recently, we also hi, uh, invite him to come to our class right, to deliver talks how to win in this kind of hackathon competitions. I, I think we want to share the student with all this, uh, this kind of good uh, experience uh, because, because of his uh, experience in all these competitions, he actually got a lot of job offers. I, uh, uh, this is only one of them. And our department is helping students to uh, equip themselves in, so that they can have a uh, 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 better skills in uh, seeking job uh, after graduation. So we also have so-called the PPP program, uh, uh, the corporate mentorship programs, and also some firm visit. Or even we have a very big scale of career fairs as well. To encourage students to work harder in the program, we also uh, provide some scholarships. Uh, this is one recent one. We are. Uh, Winnie 10 uh, scholarship in applied AI. So uh, we have two scholarships offered to year three and year four students. And Dr. Winnie 10 actually graduated from our faculties and is a founder and chairman at East Free China. It's a very important uh, geographical information system companies in the world. Talking about our Jupyter applications. So if you want to join the program, these are the requirements. So English is five. Chinese 3, and math, uh, compulsory math is level 4, and M1 or M2 is also level 4 above. Liberal studies is level 2, plus two other uh, elective with level 3 or above. So the, our admission quota is 15 to 20. And if your English is relatively uh, lower than 5, say level 4, then if you also have good results in other uh, subjects, uh, we still would consider. Bear in mind one thing, like we have some weightings uh, on some math and uh, science subjects, so if you, and also languages. So if you have a better result, uh, actually 
uh, you will have a high chance to be admitted. Uh, we, for English, math, and M1, M2, we have a double weighting. For science subjects, we have 1.5 uh, weighting, and for the others, uh, we have no additional weightings. So these are the, the information that you have to know. And these are the admission statistics. In 2019, we admit 19 students. 12 of them are DSE local students, five of them from various countries, and two from mainland. And based on the best six DSE score, the maximum is 43.5, average 37.1, the lowest quantile is 34.5. These are some reference only, because the figures actually will vary from years to years, right? Don't just rely on this number. But of course, if you really are interested in the program, I always encourage you to apply for this program. I think you will uh, learn a lot from this. So if you want to have any more information about the program, please con go to this website and you will see a lot of updates about the programs. So thank you very much.